Alright, so I did a little bit on arm rounding last time. We're going to show you a little bit of something about the chain mail. Uh, never mind the music in the background, the noise and whatnot. I got some movie, a little Indiana Jones going in the background because when you're working on chain mail, it helps to have something in the background so you can rest your eyes a little bit, have a little something to listen to. Yeah, I don't want to focus too hard, it might burn out. Now, what I got here is a sheet of six in one. And what that means, for those who don't know, is that for every one ring, you have six connecting rings going through it. And what this is, is it'll give it a nice tighter appearance than a four in one would, where there's only four rings going through one ring. And that'll give me less gap space visible, which is handy because I don't really like how it looks when there's huge gaps in it because it kind of negates the entire point of it in the first place in my opinion. Now uh, I already have it started. I'll make a separate video later to show you how I make these rings in the first place. As you can see I have a nice tub full of rings left cut up because all I'm doing is I'm taking a uh, 16 gauge spool of galvanized steel pretty soon I believe I will actually upgrade to some stainless steel since I found a place to buy it from that's cheaper than the galvanized because the main downside to galvanized is although it holds up the rust and everything pretty good it will uh, bleed off on your skin so it really doesn't work too good for jewelry if that's the kind of thing that you're trying to make chain mail for or just something to wear in general because it'll discolor your skin if, you know, prolonged use. Now, like I said, I already have it started. Some other time maybe I'll make one to show you how to start it. There is a wealth of resources as to how to make these, although most of them are picture guides, which if you're first picking it up is a great way to learn. Real easy, they have CG pictures, they have color-coded ring showing you this is this row and this is this row. I will post a link somewhere with the video. I don't know, either down there or on the video if I can figure it out annotation-wise. But what we got here is we got a bunch of pre-cut rings. Got my tools, two needle nose pliers, that's all you really need for this part. Assuming that you got the rings cut already. And all it takes is how I have this set up right now. I can see if I can get this in here a little closer. The camera's kind of perched precariously. Let's see if I have this one ring running through this one ring so that we just have this one connected to two right now. Not much in the lines of six and one, but what this lets me do is I can come up here with this ring and I can loop it through two rings and this one. Now what this will do is this will give this back one three rings that it passes through. This one here two rings that it passes through. And it makes a great building point. It makes it easier to do. I'm then going to take the other end of it and bring it up behind this row of rings. And that will slide right through like so. At this point We just kind of pinch it closed. It's as easy as clamping on here and give it a nice little twist, just like so, till it's even. And now we have a ring in here. This ring has these two that it goes through, and it goes through these two here. And then the next outer row will also come through here, and that'll give it the six. Now, what I will do is I will try to zoom in a bit the next one see if I can let you see a little better what I'm doing here. If my hands are in the way I apologize. i got these big sausage fingers. Now what this is doing, you can see how we got the opening here. We're going to slide this under these two rings here. Now we lift it up. Now what you see, you can see how it goes underneath this one and it comes on right in there. 
We then spin this sideways, so this piece, which is now on the bottom, as you can kind of make out, let me get some backing here, top, bottom, slide this underneath these rings here, you might have to push them back a little bit to get in there, and this will go through two rings here, this back one and this front one. And then again, you give it a nice little closed pinching. You can kind of see that pretty good right there. What we'll do is we'll carry this all the way across here. And what this will do is you can see right here how we have these two. But there's nothing going through this one like the other one. Where right here we have a ring coming through it. And then another one, then a ring. Kind of like a layered scale look. Almost as fish scales or lizard scales. What we will end up doing is we'll take another ring and we'll work our way across it like so. So we'll have one ring coming through there and then when we get the next one in we'll do it like that and that'll fill out this row. And what that'll do is that'll give us a good basis and how I'm planning this is that my arm, let me zoom out here, my arm is going to be this way so this is going to overlap it because there's less to my arm width wise, you know, round wise than there is length wise since this is going to hopefully go all the way up my shoulder and what that will do is when we go to make it height increased all we have to do is lace the ring through three rings, three rings, three rings, three rings, three rings, three rings and it just makes it a lot quicker to build the height than the width. And since I need more height than width, it makes pretty much perfect sense in my opinion. And that right there is pretty much how to put together six and one. I apologize if the camera really doesn't work that good. Feel free to leave a comment or something if you have any questions or maybe if you have any suggestions as to how to make it easier for anybody to see what I'm trying to do with this. Or whichever you feel like. 